All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show here on this flooded football Friday, unfortunately. But we got good news. Saved the show today. The great Sal Palantonio uh, joining us here. I hope that I hear that I hear the phone hang up. Nope, he's good. All right, what's up, Sal Pal? How are you, my friend? Hey, I'm doing well. We're at NFL Films uh, in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, taping the NFL matchup show as we do every Friday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, I'm planning on getting on a plane and coming down to Tampa tomorrow for the game on Sunday. What do you got for me, JP, weather-wise? Uh, it's it's going to be sunny and nice and hot, but uh, there's flooding everywhere. The flooding subsided, though, for the most part. It's gone, but it uh, we have a lot of damage left behind. Um, a lot of Buck fans may not have uh, cars to get to the game because they've all been flooded. So uh, there's going to be a lot of damage here. But as far as the game goes on, full steam ahead. Airport's going to be open. Weather's going to be nice. Um, and we got a good football game, uh, Sal Pal. This is, I think this is going to be a fun game to watch. So many injuries. What can you tell us about uh, the injury situation for the Eagles? Well, it's not good. I mean, it looks like they'll be missing both Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, their top two wide receivers. Neither one of them practiced yesterday. And we'll see whether they're going to have any kind of involvement at all in practice today or the walkthrough on Saturday before the team gets on the plane and comes down to Tampa. But, you know, neither one of them practicing yesterday or Wednesday is not good. And then, of course, Lane Johnson, their all-pro starting right tackle, he's got a concussion. He hasn't practiced Wednesday or Thursday. Mm. And uh, since Lane Johnson was drafted, when they don't have Lane Johnson in the starting lineup, the Eagles' winning percentage dips below 390. It's bad. So it's a guy that they really, really miss. But they're getting better defensively. They had a good game last week defensively. I think Vic Fangio has figured out that he needs to get bigger and uh, just – Overall, more stout on the defensive line. They, they got rid of Bryce Huff on rundowns and put in Milton Williams, shifted him from D tackle to DN. Smart. Sometimes they were out there with five or six defensive linemen against Alvin Kamara, and that worked. So that's going to be, uh, I think, something that you guys should look for is they're going to load up the box and then try to go after stop the run and go after Baker Mayfield. They feel like that that's the matchup that they can exploit. They're good up the middle. Jalen Carter is uh, right now number two in pro football focused among all defensive linemen in pass rush win rate. And Zach Braun, uh, Zach Braun, their middle linebacker, is second in tackles in the NFL. And Reed Blankenship, their safety, they're good up the middle, JP. Reed mm-hmm. Blankenship, their strong safety, uh, leads all safeties in the NFL in coverage win rate. So they are strong up the middle on defense. You know, Sal, I, I look at his team and, you know, I go back to the playoffs of last year and I say, you know, there's the roster, you know, for Philadelphia, they, they've added some guys, but it, 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 this is more about what Philly has internally, right? Sirianni, Jalen Hurts. Like, that's what I need to know. Is this the team that started, uh, what, 10-0 and last year or the team that faded – so fast. What what team do we can we expect to see on Sunday for the Eagles? Well, I think it's a team that's a work in progress with a lot of injuries. I think it's different from last year because Kellen Moore is at the offensive coordinator slot and he has changed their approach on offense, more free snap motion, uh, a lot more complexity to present to the defense. But uh, you know, Jalen Hurts is still you know, pretty good. He's second in scrimmage yards in the NFL right now to Lamar Jackson, but he's got too many turnovers, 26 right. in his last 20 games. That's holding them back. You know, they are the third-ranked offense in the NFL, but they're only scoring 23 points a game. Why? Well, turnovers. because the quarterback keeps turning the ball over, and, you know, if Saquon Barkley catches that ball on Monday night, you know, they'll be 3-0. So they've got, they've got some players that have – Really improved under Kellen Moore, but they still need to reduce the turnover uh, on offense. Sal Palantonio joining us here. Uh, and for, for the Buccaneers, Sal, I really feel like they're going to stack the box, go man-to-man on the outsides without the great receivers that the, that the Eagles are going to have. And they're going to target one is going to be Saquon Barkley and stopping the run. He has been absolutely tremendous. Everything that the Eagles could ever have wanted him. But this game – 
you know, he's going to be a marked man. And Todd Bowles has got to find a scheme to, to play around his injuries up front with Vita Vey and Clyde Jacanzi. I don't think either one of them are going to play. Can the Bucks find a way to stop Saquon Barkley? I think that's where this whole game comes down to. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. As Ron Jaworski used to tell me on the matchup show way back when, back in the day, this is where the rubber meets the road, <laughs> Sal, pal. This is where the rubber meets the road. And uh, that's this is the game within the game. The Bucks have struggled to stop the run. The Eagles have the top rushing back in the, in the NFL, top running back in the NFL, and Saquon Barkley. But without Lane Johnson on the right side, uh, I think they'll they'll be forced to really run left as much as they can, unless you know they can get some production out of Tyler Steen or Fred Johnson on the right side. They're going to have some struggles, I think in spreading the ball out the way they want to. And I do agree with you. I think that's what Bolsey's going to do. He's going to play press man-to-man on Johan Dotson, who doesn't scare anybody, right. and uh, on, on Johnny Wilson, the rookie wide receiver out of Florida State. Um, they, they'll, they'll definitely play bump and run on those guys, and they'll try to man up on Goddard. Goddard had a good game last week only because the Saints just forgot about him, and Bolsey's not going to forget about Goddard. So no. That's going to be... That's not going to be something that he forgets about. So I think you're right. They will go man-to-man on the outside, load up the box, and then they will blitz the you-know-what, and it's Jalen Hurts. <laughs> yeah, they should. <laughs> they blitzed a lot last week against Bo Nix, and it didn't win. I think it was because they were playing soft on the corners and gave them an easy out. But I don't think they're going to do that this week. And, Sal Pal, you're going to be calling national radio with uh, another friend of the show, Steve Levy. So two of my favorite guys going to be in the booth together. I'm going to have to stop in and say hello. I won't bother you, but I'll bring you a cookie or something. So looking forward to hearing you on the radio. I want some bananas foster that they always okay. have at the at, at James Stadium. I will deliver, I will deliver <laughs> at, at halftime. Yeah, me, me and Steve, this is like a, a dream come true for me, as you know, JP. First of all, to be with Steve Levy in the ESPN radio booth is really a treat. He's incomparable. I love yeah. being with him. We're, we're good friends. He's so knowledgeable, and he brings so much joy to the arena, so much energy to the to the booth. Uh, he lifts everybody up. I love Steve Levy. But to be in Tampa, my home away from home, with my two teams, the Eagles, and my team that's my team away from home, the Bucks. It's a dream come true for me. I can't wait. Well, I know you got a heart out here at 1140, so go do what you got to do. Thank you so much for jumping in here. You just made our week. Hey. So I'll see you Sunday, partner. <laughs> okay. Well, JP, listen, we got to get in the studio, tape this, then I got to take my wife to lunch or else, you know, we're going to have a problem, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Yeah. Priorities, my man. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, hey, Sal. Are going to get on the tennis court tomorrow? Too. That's what I hear. Yeah, I, I'm going to try to take Clarky out tomorrow. Yeah, if, the, if they're not flooded. They might be flooded. I'll All have right, to check yeah. with the club. <laughs> so, All right, we'll, well either tennis or lunch at Pomaceo. I'm looking forward to it. All right, sounds good, Sal Pal. Come on down. See you, bud. All right, brother. Thank you. Um, yeah, we got, we got John Clark from uh, Philadelphia NBC. These are my tennis brothers uh, that uh, we, we play every time the, the two of them come down. So, And last time I was able to uh, – defeat them for the first time ever i had to call in a uh, division one tennis player to do it but hey you got to do what you got you, you got a ringer huh you gotta you gotta get a ringer <laughs> we're nice. playing doubles and rhett rollison the coach of florida southern came over and he brought uh one of his tampa players i forget the young man's name great young kid michael something anyway so i'm i'm like okay he's my partner again what michael Chang was it <laughs> Oh, he's, this kid's like six four. Okay, and, and he goes, and he's like, "Well, should I, you know, hit it full on the serve?" I'm like, "Hell, f and yes, I've never <laughs> beaten these guys. Give me the, give me the one twenty five. Oh my <laughs> god, he's, he's just loading up, hitting bombs. <laughs> Dude, have you ever tried to hit 120 mile an hour serve it's, at a return one? It's impossible. It's almost Dude. impossible. It's, it's like trying impossible. to hit a 100-mile-an-hour fastball, right? It's just yeah, it's, ridiculous. 